Austria-Hungary is famous for not performing too well during the First World War. It had to deal with military blunders, a dysfunctional government, ethnic strife within its own borders, economic malaise and diplomatic mistakes. But given how bad of a time Austria-Hungary had during the war, why didn't make peace earlier? Why wait until the country was collapsing and not try to save it by surrendering earlier? So it won't surprise you to know that during the early years of the war, nobody was thinking of surrender. And by the time the war had evolved into its famed stalemate, the idea of suing for peace after so many men had been lost for so little wasn't acceptable. The Germans did make an offer of peace in 1916, but it was essentially a give us everything we want and we'll stop kind of an offer. In late 1916, Emperor Franz Joseph decided that this war and its consequences were no longer his problem, which meant it was time to die. This left the imperial and royal throne to his grandnephew, Charles, who wasn't all too keen on the mass slaughter of the past few years and so wanted to bring the war to an end. The initial problem was, of course, Germany. The Germans were the undisputed leaders of the Central Powers and made it clear that they wouldn't accept anyone making a separate peace. As such, Charles had to keep any attempts to end the war quiet, and so he turned to one of the few people that he could trust, his wife, Queen Zita. Zita was an Italian and her brother had joined the Belgian army at the beginning of the war. And so Zita approached him to speak to the French government on the Emperor's behalf to see what terms the French would accept. And the demands for peace were simple. 1. Recognition that Alsace-Lorraine was rightfully a part of France. 2. The restoration of Belgian independence. 3. Vienna would agree to an independent Serbia to itself. 4. It would hand over territory to Italy. 5. It would acknowledge Russian ownership of Constantinople should it happen and sixth, the Austro-Hungarian Empire would undergo sweeping internal reforms. This seems like a lot, but Charles was happy with most of these. Belgium and Alsace-Lorraine didn't affect him directly, and so those were fine. Because as far as he was concerned, he was already betraying Germany by seeking peace, so what was one more deception? To him, an independent Serbia was also fine, except for the fact that Charles's definition of what an independent Serbia was was very different to that of France. His plan was that Serbia would grow to this, becoming a Yugoslavian kingdom. However, it would be one ruled by a Habsburg, and thus permanently an ally of Austria something the French would obviously never agree to. Whereas the internal reforms of Austria-Hungary were seen as fine because Charles wanted that anyway. The two sticking points were Italian territorial gains and Russian control over Constantinople. Charles felt that Italy hadn't actually won anything and thus wasn't entitled to any Austrian territory. The plan was to ignore this demand under the assumption that peace would mean more to the Entente than keeping Italy happy, whereas Russian expansion to the south would threaten Vienna's influence in the Balkans. Charles' hope was that Britain wouldn't tolerate Russian expansion into the Mediterranean, and that as a result this would never happen. And soon after this, the Russian Revolution made it irrelevant anyway. The problem now was that victory over Russia meant that those within Charles' government suddenly believed that they could win the war outright. This is why his foreign minister, Count Ottokar Chernin, argued against making peace, and he publicly decried the French as prolonging the war due to their territorial ambitions. The French were upset by this, and realising that peace wasn't an option, they published the letters they'd received from the Emperor. To put it mildly, this upset Austria's German allies and many in the government and military felt betrayed. Not long after this revelation, Germany's relative position of power meant that it could force Austria into signing some humiliating treaties. The Treaty of Spa, for example, gave Germany control over Austrian foreign affairs. And so, with the Emperor's attempts to make peace a failure, the dual monarchy was stuck in the war until the very end. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle, Katoitska, Yuduan Wang, Anthony Beckett, YN Hockey, Marcus Arzner, Captain Sidog, Gustav Swan, The McWhopper, Alex Schwinn, Marvin Cassow, Winston Kaywood, Shuenin, Andy McGeehy, A.F. Firefly, Spinning Three Plates, Spencer Lightfoot, Camus Noon, Maggie Patskowski, Remco Hoisman, Copper Tone, Jim Strunberg, Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Charles I, Miss Izzet, and Words About Books podcast.